Following the PowerPoint, you will be required to complete a quiz in order for your team to complete the pre-registration process. As a captain, it is your job to relay all information in this PowerPoint to your teammates. It is also your job to make sure that all the participants are responsible for the rules and the intramural sports policies posted on IM Leagues on the left-hand side toolbar. Ignorance of the rules is not an excuse for their violation. The Office of Competitive Sports is located in room 1025 of the Natatorium. Our office phone number is 608-262-8258. The intramural, intramural sports email is the best way to contact us at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu. The weather hotline number is 608-262-8258. 4756. Option number four will get you the cancellation information. All efforts will be made to announce cancellations by 3 p.m. on weekdays. Regular season games are only rescheduled in extreme circumstances. Playoff games that are canceled due to inclement weather will be rescheduled and most likely pushed to the following day, subsequently pushing all other games in the bracket back a day. Please check IM Leagues for schedule revisions. Cancellations. If your team is wishing to cancel a game, you or another co-captain must email the Intramural Sports Administrative Staff at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu by 12 p.m. the day of the contest with your name, your team name, the league of play, and the intent to cancel. Once a cancellation has been gra granted, the request cannot be overturned. Cancellations must be made by 12 p.m. the day of the contest, otherwise it will result in your team being charged a $25 default fee. Phone cancellations will no longer be accepted. What is a default? A default is when a team has less than the minimum number of required players, and that differs by sport, of a team have checked in with the supervisor at the scheduled location within 10 minutes of the scheduled time of the contest. The supervisor will then declare the contest a default. A default carries a $25 fee which can be paid online using your IM Leagues account. In order to participate in intramurals, you must have a valid recreational sports membership. So all fee paying students are eligible to participate in intramural sports. Faculty and staff members must have a valid recreational sports membership and they are eligible to participate as well. All participants must activate their account on IM Leagues prior to play. That is important when adding people to your roster that they activate their IM Leagues account. Participants may only compete on one single gender team and one co-rec team. Participants are not allowed to play on two single gender teams or two co-rec teams. One of your jobs as captains is to be responsible and ensure the accuracy of your team's roster before the playoffs begin. Rosters may be viewed at any time on IM Leagues. Players that are added to the roster can be added at any time on IM Leagues or at the game site provided they are eligible to play for that team and meet all other requirements. So as long as the team hasn't played on another team in that same division they are able to go ahead and be added at that time. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the regular season will forfeit that game. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the playoffs will forfeit that game and will be immediately dropped from further competition. All participants must have a valid UWID card or recreational sports membership card that swipes into Fusion. 
If you or a participant forgets their UWID card, they can still gain access by using a courtesy pass, as long as they have another valid photo ID or have a picture in Fusion. If their picture is in Fusion, they have a driver's license, a passport, or any other government issued photo ID, they will go ahead and get a courtesy pass. Courtesy passes may be issued up to six times per semester for participants. This includes entries into facilities. And numbers are reset at the beginning of every semester. So if you were checking into the natatorium to play basketball for intramural sports, that would count as two courtesy passes, one to get into the natatorium and one more to participate in the program. The following slide is a breakdown of our sportsmanship rating. Remember that sportsmanship ratings are affected by a team's participants and spectators conduct before, during, and after a contest. All teams that achieve a 4.0 average or higher in sportsmanship rating and maintain that 4.0 average will make the playoffs as long as they have less than two forfeits, cancellations, defaults, or any combina combination of the aforementioned and achieve a regular season of rec record of 500 or better. So you have to hit all three bullet points. Any team not given the opportunity to play 50% or more of their regularly scheduled games, games canceled due to rain, not including defaults and cancellations, will be placed into the playoffs. The day following the end of the regular season, a blank bracket will be posted on the IM League's website. Teams will be ranked by their winning percentage, with the tiebreaker being accumulated sportsmanship points. Further ties will be broken randomly by the system. Starting at 5 p.m., teams will then have the option to go ahead and select their position on the bracket based on their rank. Each team will be given a specific time when they are allowed to select their spot. It is important to focus on your team's best available days and times to play throughout the playoffs more than the competition level. Please pick days that you can play. If a qualifying team misses their designated slot time, they can jump into the order where it stands and select at that time. Qualifying teams that fail to select their spot in the draft prior to its conclusion will be randomly assigned to an open spot by the league coordinator. Reschedules. Regularly, regular season games will not be rescheduled. Playoff games will only be rescheduled due to conflict with other intramural sports activities and academic conflicts such as classes, labs, and exams that result in a team not having the minimum number required to start the game. Teams wishing to request a game be rescheduled must submit a rescheduled request form located on the Rec Sports website under the intramural sports tab by 12 p.m. the business day prior to the game. Proof of conflicts must be uploaded into the form located on the website. If a team feels an intramural sports staff member has enforced a rule or policy incorrectly, they must call a timeout immediately following the ruling in question. The intramural sports supervisor will then make a decision regarding the correct ruling and how to proceed. If that supervisor is unable to make a decision there on the spot. The game will be played under protest and the intramural sports administrative staff will make a decision the following business day. Only rule interpretations and player eligibility can be protested. Note, the judgment of an official may never be protested. The competitive sports staff reserves the right to eject any individual, team, or spectator who interrupts the flow of a game in any manner. Players may be ejected before, during, and after any contest and by any rec sports staff member. To regain eligibility, the ejected person must complete each of the following listed below. 
They must prepare a written statement detailing the events surrounding the incident. In included is an outline of the events surrounding the ejection, actions that led to the ejection, assurance that behavior like that will not occur again, suggestion for appropriate disciplinary action, and how the behavior will be avoided in the future. The statement should be then sent to the coordinator of competitive sports. You should also schedule an appointment to meet with a coordinator of competitive sports. Our contact information can be found on the Rec Sports website. Please check out the Intramural Sports Handbook for further information regarding ejections and reinstatement. What's new? There are a lot of rule changes throughout specific sports. Please make sure you read through all the rules carefully and relay them to your team before play. In Co-Rec now, the differential between male and female participants can be no more than two. In previous years, that difference could be only one. By relaxing the requirement, teams should be able to go ahead and participate in more games in games that they normally would have defaulted in the past. An example being in a six on six indoor volleyball game, you needed three males and three females to go ahead and participate. Well, if you only had one female to play, this year you would be able to play. You would have to play four on six and there would be three males on the court and one female. For a complete listing of all co-rep differences, please make sure you check out the individual rules posted on IM Leagues. Starting this fall, the Inmural Sports Program will be recognizing one outstanding participant both fall and spring semester with the Dr. Walter A. Wittich Family Fund. The scholarship, which is $400 and can be used to cover whatever school expenses a student wishes, will be awarded to the Inmural Sports participant that shows a high degree of merit in the intramural sports program, specifically in the areas of participation, leadership, sportsmanship, and a growing appreciation of the lifelong value of physical activity. Any student who has participated in an intramural sport during the semester of the award is eligible to apply. Students should submit an application highlighting participation in intramural sports while at UW-Madison, the leadership shown both in sport and on campus, examples of sportsmanship, and how involvement in the intramural sports program has influenced lifelong healthy physical activity habits. Dr. Wittich established this scholarship in 1998 in memory of his grandfather, George Wittich, and his father, Walter J. Wittich, whom both gave lifelong professional support to the development and organization of recreation and rural sports programs in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Participants should complete an application online detailing how they meet the requirements for the fund and submit before December 1st. Applications will be reviewed and the recipient will be contacted by December 12th. Teams consist of five players on the court and there is a minimum of four players required to begin a game. Substitutes may only enter the game during a dead ball situation and after being called onto the court by the official. Games will consist of two 20 minute halves with a continuously running clock until the last two minutes of the game. Under two minutes in the game, the clock will stop on all whistles during the last two minutes. Teams are given a 10 minute grace period to have the required minimum number to start a game. Each team has two timeouts that can be used at any point in the game. Mercy Rule If a team is up by 50 points or more at any point during the second half, the game will end. With five minutes left to go in the game, and at any point after that, if a team is up by 30 or more points, and then also with two minutes left to go in the game, at any point, 20 points or more, the game will be called. Overtime will be played in the regular season and in the postseason. Each team will receive one timeout. Timeouts from the regulation game will not carry over into the overtime. The overtime period will be two minutes in length with the clock stopping on all whistles. Overtime will begin with a jump ball. If the score is still tied at the end of overtime, a sudden death overtime situation occurs. The period will begin with a jump ball and the first team to score will win. 
All files will carry over from regulation. Game balls will be, will be provided for you at each site. There are no hats, bandanas, or jewelry is permitted. It is important that you and your teammates wear athletic non-marking shoes. All teams are required to provide matching color team shirts or jerseys. Each shirt must have a number on the back, and numbers may not be three digits long or half numbers. Teams with dark colored jerseys must mark their numbers in light colored writing, and vice versa. Teams with light colored jerseys must mark numbers in dark colored writing. All fouls in the act of shooting will be awarded free throws. The try starts when the player begins the motion which habitually precedes the release of the ball. That is the definition of the act of shooting. Non-shooting fouls prior to the bonus will be administered by awarding the ball at the designated spot nearest the foul. Single bonuses will be administered at the 7th team foul and double bonus will be administered at the 10th team foul. Intentional and technical fouls will result in two shot unattested free throws. That means zero people in the lane besides the free throw shooter and possession of the ball. Intentional fouls uh, will be taken out at the spot of where the foul occurred and technical fouls will be taken out at half court. This is a new rule for high school and will also be a new rule for intramurals. Players in position for a free throw may not cross the free throw line until the shooter has released the ball. Previously, it had been when it touched the rim or the backboard. Now, players that are occupying marked lane spaces, they can go on the release. Everyone else outside the three-point line and the free throw shooter must wait until the ball contacts something. Players will be disqualified, disqualified upon his or her fifth foul or two technical fouls or with any flagrant foul or a combination of the three. More rule changes for this year. Hand checking and rough play is not allowed. That has always been a rule in intramurals, but it's been better defined this year. The following acts constitute a foul when committed against a ball handler or dribbler. Anytime we place two hands on the player, that is illegal when they have possession of the ball. Placing an extended arm bar on the player, that is illegal. Placing and keeping a hand on the offensive player is also illegal. And then contacting the player more than once with the same hand or alternating hands. That is illegal as well. Co-rec rules. Each field, field goal by a female will carry a bonus of one additional point. A layup would be worth three points if scored by a female in a game. Free throws attempted for fouls will be in accordance with their point values. Males will shoot two or three shots for field goal attempts, and females will shoot three or four shots. If a female makes the basket and is fouled, they have the opportunity to go ahead and make their end one as well. In the case of a female being fouled in the bonus, they will shoot a one and bonus and bonus, a one plus one plus one. They must make that second free throw in order to receive the extra throw. If a female is fouled in the double bonus, she will shoot all three free throws. There are not any rules requiring specific defenses or guarding principles in co-rec. Teams will have choice of the size of ball to use, but if it cannot be agreed upon, a women's 28 and a half ball will be used. All of the rules not specified fall subject to rules covered by the NFHS. This concludes the Intermo Sports Basketball Captains Meeting. The Captains Quiz found on IM Leagues must be completed with a score of 80% or higher before a team can be created. Feel free to contact us at imsports at rexsports.wisp.edu with your questions or feedback. Best of luck this season.